Hey everyone, Zoraz here from Not Casuals. Today I'm bringing you another Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay guide about perks, specifically the best perks that you must look into very early into the game and as well as the late game for the most amazing bonuses as well as some very important abilities that are locked behind the perks so that you must make sure to unlock if you want to do these specific tasks. Now the first perks I'm going to talk about are going to be in the body attribute in the athletic specifically. Now as you can see there is a pack mule here that increases your carrying capacity which is one of the only thing that does that so you don't have to pick it up right away but you have to look for it because you will eventually need this and will help your gameplay greatly. Now the best perk in this tree is regeneration. It is one of the only perks that actually allows you to heal without spending consumables. So if you have this you can basically hide out during combat and heal yourself without any cost. It is probably one of the most cost efficient perks that you can get in the entire game. Now in the athletics tree there's a lot of buffs for stamina, health, you can basically regenerate your health outside of combat, you can reduce your fall damage, there's a lot of important stuff which is not mandatory but some of it can be very beneficial for survival and there's one here that I find very very important, enemies cannot knock you down. Now this can be very very meaningful in the late game when you're fighting enemies that do knock you down, this can save your life. Another one that I want to highlight here is the Marathoner, which basically means that when you're sprinting, you don't drain stamina, so you can sprint indefinitely. And this one, the Multitasker, allows you to shoot while sprinting, so you can see that you can do some pretty cool stuff with this for literally any builds in the game. Now, there's really cool stuff in Annihilation Street Ballers, but those are more specific to a build that you would be doing with that gameplay, while the Athletics ones are more considered for general gameplay, depending on any build you're using. Now if we go into the reflex ones, of course, assault handguns and blades, those are all three different gameplay styles. You can do all three or you can specialize in one only. And there's going to be a lot of great stuff in all of them. But some of those to look for would be specifically like in blade. You can have counter attacks, basically restore your health and stamina. Or when defeating enemies, you restore your health and increase movement speed. So some of these are really handy to look at. Now same in the handguns, you have some passives here that reduce the recoil by 20% as well well as you can now dodge when using pistols and revolvers and you get huge crit chance after headshots so you can see that your gameplay can be impacted heavily by what you choose and some of the perks are much better than others. Now if you're going to assault one of the best ones here will be this basically when you're aiming which is something that you do often you're going to get just 10% damage at all times as well as executioner which just deals 25% more damage to high HP mobs and of course there's a lot of other great ones but some of these are really the most impactful ones. Now if we go into crafting during the technical ability there is very important ones here so if you want to ever craft legendary items you will need to get this one. Now that means you only need to get the attribute to level 18 and put one point here. You don't need to unlock anything else if you just want to craft legendary items. You also have the epic item here if you ever want to craft epic items and rare items here if you want to craft rare items. So if you don't want to do anything else but craft these rare items you can basically just go and get these three and nothing else in this tree. Now, one thing I would really recommend is you get very early is mechanic. You gain more components when disassembling. You will be disassembling a lot if you ever want to craft anything good. So if you get this right off the bat, you will be getting a lot more materials in the long run every time you disassemble. One other quality of life could be Scrapper, which basically assembles all your junk items for you without you having to go into inventory and do it. This is more of a time-saving thing than anything else, but can be very worthwhile. The last one I want to talk about here is Tune-Up allows you to upgrade lower quality components into higher quality ones. Now this can make very big difference if you loot a lot of small stuff and you want to upgrade it otherwise it's kind of wasted. So this will really really help you if you're into the crafting scene. Now when we go into cool uh, there is stealth and cold blood. Now the first one I want to talk about is cold blood. Now you will not be able to level up this skill at all until you have spent at least one point into cold blood. Once you spent a point, it's a passive that will give you a buff after killing enemies. And once you have unlocked this, it will start leveling itself up. So it is very important that if you care at all about the cold blood tree, even if you don't, that you at least put one point there early on to get some benefits. Because as you see, I'm at level three and I haven't spent a single point in it. So I can get up to 10% crit chance and 3% armor for completely free, just putting one point here. Now, if you level this up a little bit more, you'll get your perk point back what at level four instantly. So it is completely free, but you must do this early on if you really want to level this up and get the most benefits early in the game.
Now, as far as stealth is concerned, of course, this is going to be specific to a playstyle. If you don't play stealth, you don't really need to put anything here. But even if you don't play stealth and you still stealth once in a while, there are some of these that will really help you. Mostly the movement speed while sneaking, which will make your gameplay experience a lot better and faster. Now, another thing here, Assassin deals 15% more damage to human enemies. That is absolutely amazing and does not require you to be stealthing at all. This is just a buff that you can get for all. So you can be a brawler that does 15% more damage. So there is some of these here that can be very very useful even if you're not playing as a stealth character now the last one i'll talk about in the stealth will be the dagger dealer now this unlocks an ability that you can now throw knives and in most situations this will one shot your enemies and only needs five points into cool to unlock so this could be an additional perk for people who don't really want to play stealth but want to have the option of doing some kind of takedowns that are stealthy and will let you get through content easily now, lastly, if we go into intelligence, of course, this is all about hacking. There is one here, Big Sleep, that is actually very imperative that you try and get early on in the game. Because no matter what gameplay style you're going to do, you're going to encounter a lot of cameras. And getting one point into this can disable them all for three minutes, which will really, really change your game. You can put two points for six minutes if you really want, which... It is almost required to get at some point in the game because otherwise you will be fighting all the time and you will be not able to do any kind of stealth stuff if you haven't done any kind of hacking, if you're out of RAM. So this can really, really come in handy and is very important to get if you would like to not have to deal with cameras as much. Now, there's a lot of bonuses here that will help you hack and reduce the RAM cost and give you new abilities. So, of course, this is up to you if this is the gameplay style you want. Now, one other one that I would suggest if you get 7 points into intelligence is this one. This automatically highlights all nearby access points. So, this can be very handy just to ease your quality of life when you're playing the game. Now, lastly, in quick hacking, again, this always has to do with hacking. One of the ones I would suggest getting is the Bio Synergy one. Now, this allows your RAM to recover during combat. Every minute you get four RAM units. So during a long fight or an entire room where you're going through stuff, if you run out of RAM, it can cost you a lot of time and effort. Basically, this will allow you to regenerate some RAM for free and is really recommended to get at least one point into it, even if you don't care about hacking at all. This will really ease your quality of gameplay. Now, the last one that I want to talk about here is going to be I Spy. This is a passive that is almost required. This will reveal an enemy metrunner when they're trying to hack you. Now, you will have probably experienced by now someone hacking you and causing you damage and burning and all that kind of stuff. If you do not have this passive, it will be very hard to target and know what's happening to you or who's doing that to you and how to destroy them. So having this is almost mandatory in the game now you only need to have five points intelligence and use one perk point here you don't need to do anything else so if you can when you can i really recommend you get this perk right away now of course guys there is tons of perks that are amazing and there's going to be tons of builds that will utilize different perks this video was really just to cover some of the really really important ones that will change your gameplay no matter what build you are going into now you don't have to get any of the ones i said but it is good to know that they exist because sometimes it will change drastically the way you're playing and the ease of access to some levels or how to basically survive way easier or have just more fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next Cyberpunk video.